Hey church, welcome back again to HD Church Online. You know, right now we're right in the middle of our midweek series entitled One. And I hope you've been enjoying it. I hope you've been getting a lot out of it. It's so good to just be able to get into the Word and expound on it and, and get a deeper understanding of, of what God is speaking to us. And, and tonight I get the opportunity to share with you once again. And I want to just look at a scripture. It's not going to be the scripture I share with you tonight. But it'll be a foundation. I really want to establish this tonight as we move forward into what I'll be sharing with you. And in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9, the Word of God tells us this, and God speaking to us, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, God says, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than yours. We just want to establish that. We can all probably agree that God's a little bit smarter than us. Amen. The way he does things, God's ways of doing things and God's thoughts, he says, are higher than ours. So as we move in tonight into what I'm going to share with you, I really want us to kind of keep that as our foundation. Because when we get the word of God and, and we begin to apply it to our lives, there's a submission that has to take place. And when we acknowledge that God's thoughts and ways are greater than ours, it's much easier uh, to submit to his word. Amen. And what I'll be sharing with you is going to be out of Romans chapter two, uh, a scripture we all should know, but we're going to expound a little bit on it. But what I'm going to share with you tonight is about renewing the mind, renewing our mind. But I'm going to give it a little twist. It's going to be more of the benefit that it gives you as a believer. We know when we come into this life with Jesus that we need to renew our minds from our old way of thinking. But you know what? When we've been serving God for a little while, we kind of forget that we still can, need to continue to renew our minds so that we can go deeper into the things of God. And it's so important that for us as, as elderly Christians, or not elderly Christians, but more mature Christians, that we keep that heart, that teachable heart, all the time. So let's look at this. Amen. Let's go ahead and get started. Romans chapter 12. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Word of God tells us to not to be conformed to this world. Now, how many of us know that we did come out of the world? When we were growing up, uh, we were uh, conformed to everything around us well, in fashion. In, in thinking, in what we liked and didn't like, whoever we hung out with, whatever they enjoyed, a lot of times, that's what we conformed to. That's what we kind of gravitated to because of the people around us. They influenced us. And definitely the world had an influence on us through television and today through social media, all the, the different uh, things that, that are available to us constantly influence our lives and we as believers need to recognize that this is continually happening in us and we need to stop sometimes and evaluate what's taking place he says be not conformed to this world now con being conformed means this to act in accordance with the prevailing standards god says i don't want you to act in accordance to the prevailing standards the prevailing attitudes practices of society or of a group that's what con being conformed means it means that the people that we hang out with the the things that we gravitate to those will influence us and cause us to begin to take upon those types of thinking and and, and ideas that will eventually shape our lives so he, god says i don't want you to conform to this world now look in ephesians chapter 4 Verse 22, I want you to read this and, and get it out. I hope you got your notepads out and your Bibles out because we are really going to give you some good nuggets that can help you continue to grow in the things of God. Here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, I'm reading out of the easy translation. It says this, they taught you to change the way you live. You must put away the, the nature that you had before, the old nature which deceived you. And as a result, you wanted to do the things that would destroy you. It says he wants us to put away that old nature. He wants us to put away that old life, that old thinking, the one that would deceive us. And there is a deception that comes when we kind of conform ourselves to the things around us. We kind of put a limit on what we think we can do. If there's not people that are positive that around you, people that, that will encourage you to, to strive to do better in life, you're going to conform to what's around you. 
people. You're going to conform to, to those that, that are influencing you. And God says, I don't want you to do that. Amen. He said these influences even caused us to get onto a path of just, that would have led us to destruction. A lot of us were on that. Why? Because of the influences around us. Because of the, the mindset that it placed inside of us. Our mind is a very powerful thing. It is a very powerful thing. It shapes everything around us. The way we think, the, the, the way we look at things. We have to make sure that we keep that in line with the Word of God and the heart of God all the time. He goes on to say this, Instead, let God's Spirit make you think in a new way. Take up the new nature that God has prepared for you. Yes, there is a new nature that God has waiting for us. But he says that we have to take on a new way of thinking, though. In order to tap into that, that new nature that, new, that God has prepared for us, it's going to take us changing the way we think. Take up the new nature that God has prepared for you. That nature is like God's own nature then you will live in a truly good way that pleases God. Amen. The way we are going to please God is by changing the way we think, continually conforming to the ways of God, and then we will live in that great life that what? The most important thing pleases Him. Not us, not people around us. My heart is always, God, let my life please you, no matter what. So let's look at these benefits. There are benefits to renewing our minds. And I want to touch on a few. There's plenty. There's a lot of benefits, but I'm only going to share three with you tonight. And the first one is change. One of the great benefits of renewing our minds is a change that that brings to us. Remember, like I said, however we think, however we've set our minds is how we're going to see ourselves. So we have to change. So the change does not begin from the outside. It begins from the inside. And so change is going to be a part of this great transformation. In Romans 12, 2, let's look at it again. It said, he told us this, to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So that's telling me that I renew, as I renew my mind in the Word of God, as I change the way I think, it says that will lead me into this transformation that I'm looking to experience. That, that changing of the mind is what's going to do it. Now, look at this in the... the Definition for transformed is this, to change in condition, nature, or character, or to be converted. Amen. To change in condition, in nature, or character. We all want that character of God in us. We all want the nature of God developed in us. Amen. We all want to be changed from a life of darkness that we were in in the world and come into this great marvelous light of His Son, Jesus Christ. See, that's that transformation. So we were out in the world and we were programmed by society. But we come into this relationship with God and now we come in here with all of this junk, this way of thinking, this, this, these attitudes that we have. And God says, no, I can't use you in that condition. In order for me to use you, there's going to have to be a transformation. And that comes by renewing by renewing our mind. I really want to kind of drill that into you because sometimes as, as believers, we think that, that, well, I got saved and I've already kind of renewed my mind and I'm doing good. But you know what? We should all have a desire to go even higher in the things of God, to be used in greater ways by God. And the only way that's going to happen is by us continually growing. You know, one day I was cleaning my garage at home and I, and I, my wife gets on me about this. I don't listen to too much music. I do like enjoy music in my car. But when it's me by myself, um, I usually have nothing on. I, I really enjoy it because I kind of converse with God throughout the day. He'll tell me things. He'll speak to me. You know, a lot of times when I'm going to minister or something, God throughout the day will spark something inside of me in those quiet times as I'm driving around or doing something. And this day I happen to be... Uh, cleaning my garage, and I was sort of kind of lightly venting to God, you know, kind of talking to him about ministry and things that I really had in my heart to kind of get into and, and asking him, you know, why haven't these doors opened? Uh, you know, I really have a desire for you to use me in this way. And, and as we continued going on and I continued cleaning, and he just kept talking and listening and and. and I remember this just igniting in my spirit. He says, I'd really like to use you in that way. I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. 
I really like to use you in that way, but in order for me to do that, you've got to change. And I said, change? I mean, I, you got to renew your mind, he said. You got to change the way you think. I mean, I've been a Christian for 20 plus years. You know, I've been serving you for all these years, renew my mind. And what he was meaning was this new level of ministry that I would desire would, would require a different mentality, an upgraded mentality. He couldn't bring me into this the way I thought, the way I was thinking, the way I was living. He said, there are things that you're going to have to change. You're going to have to renew your mind to do some things. And so I began to sit down and think, man, that is true. You know, God wants to take us to new levels. God wants to bring us into new things. We want God to use us in, in different ways, but he can't do it in the condition we're in. Not that you're in sin, not that you're doing things wrong, but just in your faith level, your attitude level, your heart level towards people. It's going to take different attitudes and different, different uh, desires and, and heart conditions to be able to touch people's lives. And he said, you know what? I can't use you in that way. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we've been doing this for 30 years or 30 days. We have to continually renew our minds so that we continue to, to go deeper and higher and farther with God. Amen. Pastor, I, now I heard this from Pastor Juan for the first time, but I don't think he's the one that uh, originally said it. But he said, uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting change is insanity. It's insanity. See, and that's how we are with God. We want God to, to, to do things in our lives and, and, and bless us in certain ways, but we can't handle it in the condition we're in. But you see, we're not willing to make the changes in our life to put ourselves in the place where God can begin to pour those into us. See, doing things the same way and expecting change is insanity. The only way we can change is by doing something different. I can't lose weight. I can't get on a diet and continue to eat burgers and pizza and all this other food and expect to lose weight. That's insanity. What I have to do to reach my goal is to make changes in my diet, in the way I eat, the types of food I eat, the quantity that I eat. I have to make changes. And if I'm not willing to do that, then I'm not going to see the results that I want. And that's what God's telling us today. Renew your mind so that you can get the results that He wants for you and that you want for yourself. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says this, For as a person or a man thinks in his heart, so is he. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So how we think in our heart, our heart is what we're going to think about ourselves. Whatever's in our heart is how we see ourselves. So if I want to see myself differently, if you want to see yourself differently, you got to change what's in your heart. Once we saw ourselves as sinners saved by grace, but now we are children of God. And as that, that uh, is molded in us, that picture is, is, is molded in us. We no longer see ourselves as sinners, but we see ourselves as children of God. What's, say, what's, take, what's taking place? It's the heart attitude, the heart condition. What's in our heart has changed. Now I'm a child of God, not a sinner anymore. And so we have to change what's in our heart so that we can see ourselves in a new light. Renewing our mind will lead us into change. Change is such a great thing. Always a great thing. New things are always happening. If you look at our world, there's always changes taking place. And we have to be ready to embrace them so that we can continue to reach this world. You know, when we started, uh, when Pastor Juan went home to be with the Lord, there was a lot of changes. And I remember a lot of people were not ready for changes. And a lot of them had questions, were concerns, and, and they kind of mentioned them to us. But, you know, now those, they see what's taking place in the church and, and they're embracing it now. And you see, that's one thing we have to do. We, we don't have to be afraid of change. Let's embrace change so that God can take us to new heights. Amen. And the next thing I want to share with you is, uh, num is number two, our, our, our next point, and that's growth. See, change brings growth. Renewing our minds brings growth. All of us want to grow. We don't want to stay babies. We don't want to uh, just stay in the, in the shallow area of the pool. But we all have a, a desire in our heart to, to get into the deeper things. And one thing that renewing our minds will produce is growth. The ways and thinking of God are found in His Word. 
The ways and thinking of God are found in His Word. And in order for us to continue to grow, we have to dig deeper into His Word. But what renews our mind? It's the Word of God. So as we dig deeper into His Word, the renewing will begin to take place in our minds and thus bring the growth that we're desiring. The Word of God will only help change the way we think if we are willing to submit to its authority. It's so important. That's why at the beginning I shared that scripture about God's thoughts being higher than ours and God's ways being higher than ours because we have to be able to submit to the authority of God and His Word. If not, when it speaks to us, if we, if we don't have a respect for authority, we won't abide by it. So we have to give the Word of God that authority in our lives and so that we will respect it, adhere to it, and follow it. And thus, when we do that, we'll begin to see the change that we desire. Now in Mark chapter 4, there's a parable about the sower. And it says here that the sower, the, that some of the seed that the sower sowed fell by the wayside. Some of it also fell on stony ground in this parable. And it also all fell among thorns, the Bible says. But these are, and these are all conditions of the heart as we read this parable. We're not going to read it. I want you to look it up yourself. But in this parable in chapter 4 of, of Mark, he talks about the sower that's going to sow the seed into the ground. And that seed is the Word of God. But where the Word of God is sown is very important. See, these three conditions are very difficult conditions for a heart to be in because the Word of God is either going to get choked by weeds, it's going to get burned by the sun, or, if it's, or, or it's just going to be uh, taken up by all the cares and not produce in us. So abiding and recognizing the authority of the Word of God to renew our minds is going to bring and produce this growth. Now let me read the last part of it. It says, but the seed that fell on good ground, we have to be good ground. Let's endeavor to be good ground. Good ground is teachable remaining teachable, always recognizing the authority of the Word. When we remain, when we keep our heart in that condition, we will be that good ground. He says this, But the seed that fell on the good ground, the Bible says, produced growth. And it goes on to say that it produced some 30 and some 50 and some 100 fold. So the good ground is going to produce it's going to produce growth inside of us. I definitely want to grow. I want to endeavor to, to learn more about God, to be used in greater ways by God, to do greater things for the kingdom of God. But we have to grow. And renewing our minds every day, always recognizing that I don't know it all. I don't have all the answers. But God does. And if I continue in His Word, He'll renew my mind and that will produce the growth that I need so that I can learn a little bit more. I don't think we'll ever get to a point where we know it all, but we will learn enough to continue to be used by God. Growth will only come if we allow ourselves to be good ground. So choose today in your heart. I'm not going to kick against the Word of God anymore. I'm not going to put it by the, on the, by, by the wayside when it becomes too hard. And we like to do that as Christians. We like to follow the easy stuff and the good stuff but when the hard parts of the Word of God, forgiving and, and giving and, and changing comes in, sometimes those are difficult things for us to do. So we like to push those things. They, they call those favorite word Christians, and we don't want to be that. We definitely do not want to be favorite word Christians. We want to be Christians that remain teachable so that we can continue renewing our minds and that we can continue to flourish in the things of God. Amen. My final point I want to get into with you is this. By renewing our mind, we discover our purpose. We all want to know what our purpose is. We all want to know what, what it is that God has placed us here to do. We all want to know that uh, why is it that God came into our lives? What is it that God desires us to accomplish for His kingdom? We all want to know that. And the only way can, we can really come to understand it is by renewing our mind every day, by staying pliable, by seeking God, by striving after Him. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I'm going to read it out of the, the Passion Translation this time for you. He says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. 
through a total reformation of how you think. So how are we going to be changed? By changing how we think. That change takes place on the inside and it gradually shows on the outside. But look at this, at the tail end of the scripture, this is what it says. This will empower you, this renewing of your mind, this changing of the way you think. This is what it says. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. It says this will empower us to discern what God's will is. It'll cause us to understand what it is God wants from us. I know that's one of the biggest things I had before I came to Christ is I, I believed in God. I, I knew I didn't know him, but I, I knew of him and I knew what I would have to uh, one day reckon with him. And the biggest question I had was, what does he want from me? What is it that he wants from me? What do I have to do to serve him? What do I have to do to follow him? And now I'm finding out every day that my mind is being renewed as I sit there and I hear the word, as I, as I listen to our, the tapes that we have and these videos that are going out, this word that's constantly going inside of us every day, God is showing me, and I know he'll do the same for you. He's showing me his will for me. Now, he hasn't shown it all to us. Don't, you know, don't be careful not to think that God's going to just roll it out. A lot of people say if God were to do that, he'd scare the heck out of us. But he's not. He's going to show you enough of what he wants for you to keep you striving and striving for more. It says that this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful, satisfying and perfect life in his eyes. Amen. The King James says it this way, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we prove that good and acceptable will of God and perfect will of God? It's through renewing our minds. It's by changing the way we think. So I want to encourage you. Don't stop growing. Don't stay stagnant in your life. Keep striving. Keep digging. Keep reaching. Keep, keep going after the things of God. And as you do that, you'll have a hunger for everything that He has for you. My last scripture I want to share with you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And it's in verse 9. It says this, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them. Our minds cannot comprehend everything that God has for us. Our minds can understand the things that God wants to do for us and in us and through us. Our minds cannot comprehend it. Our carnal minds. But he says this. He says, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. He says, but this, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Who's going to show us? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit renewing our minds through the word of God is going to slowly bring us to come to understand what God's purpose is for us. Amen. So discover all that God has prepared for you. Continue to renew your mind. Continue to strive for the things of God. Amen. I hope that blessed you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took a lot of notes. I know we gave you a lot of, of scriptures, but truly, truly dig into it. Dig into it and don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, don't ever think in yourself, I've already gotten there. I've already done that. That's for the young people. Never think that. You know, we all, till we go home to be with him, are going to be about our father's business, growing the kingdom of God. Amen. Hey, HD Church, I hope that ministered to you. I know I really enjoyed it as God spoke it into me, and I know it will help you in your walk with the Lord. Amen. We want to prepare our hearts to give, and I just want to share a quick scripture with you. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured back to you again. Today, as you prepare to give, know this, that as you give, God always brings it back. God always has a desire to see you have even more in your life to be a greater blessing to the kingdom of God. And so tonight, as you give, you know on the screen is everything, all the information you need to, to be able to give. So we want to pray over your giving this evening and pray over our service tonight. Father, we just thank you right now 
for every giver. As they continue to sow and obey your word in their giving, Father God, we know that you're going to multiply that seed sown back into their lives. Cause abundance and overflow to overtake them in every area of their lives in Jesus' name. And tonight, as we have had your word, Minister to us, Father God. We know that you desire us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed into the very image of your Son. So, Father God, help us every day as we read your word. Lead us by the Holy Spirit in that study of your word so that our minds can be renewed and fully understand what your will is for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.